Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to guests and speakers from different parts of the world. Welcome to another weekly cultural storytelling events where we share stories about food, history, travel, and more importantly, inspiring people, our lifestyles around the world. Today, I would like to invite um, a dear friend of us who lives in Delhi, India. Um, some of us have already met JD last year from his wonderful curry cooking event. Today, he is going to share with us the hidden gem in Delhi, India. Hi, JD. Good to see you. Good, good evening yeah. to you. Yeah, good evening to everyone. And uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. And also, you know, guys, just let me, you know, uh, quickly introduce myself. Um, so my name is JD, and I'm from New Delhi, India. And I've been organizing food tours and cooking classes in Delhi for the last six years. And since last year, I started doing this online cooking classes and offering this, you know, all virtual tours. And today, uh, I'm gonna, I will take you to Shah Jahanabad, uh, currently known as Old Delhi. And, you know, I will show you this a small part of my city, small part of Delhi. And from this small part, you will get the idea how diverse India is. And by the end of this event, uh, this experience, you will have a better understanding about India's food, culture, religion, et cetera, et cetera. Like that. Right. So. Thank you very much, JD. We look forward to see Indian's diversity through this small um, 40 minutes talk from you. Uh, people in the group, if you've got questions, feel free to type in the chat box so we can do a final Q&A at the end. So over to you, JD. Perfect. So you know, let me share my screen. One second. So uh, everyone can see, uh, one second. Everyone can see the video now? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So guys, uh, do you know like uh, about Delhi? So let me tell you something about Delhi is, you know, Delhi is one of the, you know, oldest cities in the world. And the interesting fact about Delhi is, you know, uh, whichever dynasty, whoever ruled India, they made Delhi as their capital. Uh, for example, currently New Delhi is the capital. Before them, when India was under the British rule, Delhi was the capital. And before them, Mughal dynasty. So Delhi was their capital. So whichever dynasty ruled, they made Delhi as their capital because it's easy to rule from Delhi. And because of this, Delhi is so rich in culture, history, food, and religion, and diversity. And that's what we will see today. I'm gonna you know, let you enjoy this video for a few more seconds and then I'll you know, move to the next slide. And also like, uh, you must have heard of Taj Mahal. Have you heard of Taj Mahal? Yes. Definitely, definitely. Perfect. So the guys, the so the emperor who built Taj Mahal is the same emperor who built this red fort. And you know when he was shifting his capital from Agra to Delhi, he built this fort. And you know why it's called red fort because it's made from red sandstone. And in Hindi, the name is Lal Kila. So Lal means red color, and Kila means fort. And the interesting you know, thing about this fort is, people say that there is an interconnected tunnel which connects this fort with Agra fort, this fort. So this fort is in Agra. And the, dis the distance between these two forts is 300 kilometers. And yes, uh, people might not believe that, but you know, 10 years back, we found a, they found a, a floor in this fort uh, with 32 rooms in it. So you never know, there might be a tunnel, but there is a tunnel which connects Agra Fort with Taj Mahal. And so guys, uh, today we are here at this old Delhi. So I'm gonna show you on this map and you can also see my uh, cursor moving or no? Can yes, you see the we cursor? Can. Okay, perfect. So we are here at this red fort, okay? So today we will explore this part. Uh, we will start from the red fort and we will end at the Asia's largest spice market. And the total distance is around a kilometer. So we are in this old Delhi. And, you know, before uh, we will explore this part, 
let me you know take you this uh, monument this is also important and this is also in the same area old delhi so the same emperor uh, shah jahan who built taj mahal who built red fort is a is the same emperor who built this mosque so it's called now masjid and it's one of the largest mosque in india and it's very prominent for muslim in india and uh, it was built in 1650 and you know it has three entrances so initially when it was built so the first the east side entrance was only reserved for the emperor and his associate and other uh, two entrances for the general public and they built it with this uh, red stand stone and marble in their courtyard 25000 people can pray at one time and also this was the uh, last uh, one of the last monument built by the same emperor shah jahan this was the last monument okay so now we'll you know just come back uh, to the red fort okay so now we are here okay one second so our next stop is a uh, jain temple so guys tell me uh, how many of you have you heard of this jain jainism this religion called jainism you can just type it in the chat box or just raise your hand so that i can know how many of you have idea okay kim says tajuddin okay yes. so some quite a few wow. people said yes yes uh i have not myself uh wow Hmm. Perfect. Well, majority people said yes. Nice. This is good because you know people do not know about Jainism a lot. So Jainism, I will not bore you with this, you know, long history. I will just tell you, you know, just basics of Jainism. So that's the Jain temple. It's just opposite to the Red Fort. So we are here at this Red Fort, and this is the Jain temple. Okay. So Jainism is one of the oldest religion. Uh, one second. Just give me a second. Jainism is one of the oldest religion in India, and you know they played an important role in making India vegetarian. Oh. And you know they they have twenty uh, four uh, gurus, and mainly they believe in three things. So first is non violence. Even Mahatma Gandhi was inspired from this religion, and that's how he started his non violence movement against Britishers. People don't know about. this but this that's a fact and the second is they don't believe in debating they will listen to your perspective and other person's perspective and that's how they grow and the third is uh, they believe in non attachment so they for example jain monks are completely naked so it's not like in the next slide you will see naked jain monks no surprises today no tada so but you will ask me like why do jain monks do not wear anything so the reason is you know wearing clothes and it's like you know taking care of the body and attachments to one's body so that's the reason they do not wear anything and i will show you some of the photos of this you know temple as well and you know you know actually photography in this temple is not allowed but i still you know somehow managed to get some of the photos from the inside it might not be that clear but you will get the idea so you know you will notice inside the temple you will see all these statues but look similar see all the statues will look similar so if you visit a jain temple you will see all the statues will look similar something like this and you will ask like you know why is that so the reason is once your soul get pure there is no shape there is no identity so that's the reason all their god statue will look similar and you will ask like you know they have 24 gurus how they recognize which one is their first master which one is their last master so they have symbols so if you see at the bottom you will see a lion symbol here so that's their 24 uh, guru and in jainism they known as tirthankars so so lion is there represent their uh, that's the symbol of their 24th master if you see a serpent this that's parshnath so every god every master they have their own symbol and i will show you some more you know photos of this temple from inside and rituals in you know hinduism and jainism is more or less like very similar in hinduism jainism 
and you know all these if you see all these you know walls and ceilings are all hand painted it's all hand painting okay so you know when you see this um, you know photo you will you know see a symbol which many people will think like what do you think and you know you see a swastika symbol can you see you all yeah. can see this swastika symbol and here i'm going to ask you a question so as per you what this you know symbol signifies in india so you can type your answers in a chat box and let's see okay so the question is the impression of this symbol is it positive or negative people are typing away uh, most people say positive there's one answer as balance uh, a few people as negative but and some people said both <laughs> So you've got <laughs> answers of a lot of positives, maybe one or two negative, some balanced and some both. You've got everything, JD. <laughs> Perfect. But, you know, uh, the answer is uh, the swastika symbol is considered very auspicious in India. It's very auspicious in the world. Swastika comes from a Sanskrit word, which means well-being, which is you know translate to well-being, and you know, and this symbol is widely used in three religions, uh, in Hinduism, Jainism, and Buddhism. So luck. Uh, in Jainism, it symbolizes or it represents. So if you see that photo of that pillar, one second. So you see, uh, you know, a statue, and that's his symbol. So that's the seventh guru in Jainism. So that the symbol represents that, and in Buddhism, uh, it symbolizes auspicious uh, footsteps of Buddha and uh, his heart. And you know, and also you will find the symbol at the you know at the entrance of a Hindu house. And also, whenever you know we are starting something new, so we draw this symbol. So this symbol is very is very positive. It's you know it just cuts the negativity. So it's very positive. Uh, in India, the symbol, and because you know when I do these food tours and everything, so uh, many people ask me like, why do you uh, are Indians are Nazis and everything like that? But it's not; it's different. And next is um, so you know we are here at this uh, Jain temple, this Lal Mandir, and it's also made from uh, you know red sandstone. And just next to this, we have this Gauri Shankar temple. So this temple, you you know the history of this temple. It's quite interesting. You might like it. So the story of this temple goes like this. You know this temple is like you know eight hundred years old. And the story goes like that is uh, there was a you know a Marathi soldier named Gangadhar, and he was a devotee of Lord Shiva. And one day he badly got injured in a battle, and he prayed to Lord Shiva to you know save his life. And in return, he promises to build a beautiful temple. And magically, you know, he survived against all the odds, and he built this beautiful temple in return. And uh, you know, here I'll you know ask you a question: Which one of these is Lord Shiva? A, B, or C? Mm, wow. B and C. Mark says B N. I have no idea what's B N. So most people come up as B boy. Most people are saying a B. B for boy. Okay. Perfect. Oh, one A. One A. One okay. A, so now you've got everything A and B and C, but B, the choice of B dominates. Okay, perfect. You know all these gods are super important. Uh, so okay, so the right answer is C. So first one is Lord Brahma, and second one is Lord Vishnu. So Lord Brahma is a creator, Lord Vishnu is a preserver, and Lord Shiva is a destroyer. So you know, let me uh, here. You know, let me tell you the story how Lord Shiva was 
upon. So there are many theories and everything. Many people believe that uh, Lord Shiva was created automatically, and um, she, Lord Shiva was here, like was here, like when there was like nothing, and he will remain. He will still be here when everything will be gone, disrupted. But you know, one uh, story is one day Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu were you know arguing, arguing who's you know more superior, and suddenly. Uh, out of nowhere, a blazing pillar appeared. So the top and the end was invisible. And both the God, you know, heard an oracle, asked them to, you know, uh, heard and asked them to compete, to find the start or the end. So Lord Brahma went upwards and Lord Vishnu went downwards. So both the gods tried tirelessly. And when they gave up, Lord Shiva was waiting for them. And, you know, this uh, made them uh, realize that there is, you know, an ultimate power that is ruling this universe. So that's the, you know, popular uh, story about how Lord Shiva was created. And I'll, next is, so this is, you know, this area is Chani Chok. In this video, as you can see, like we started from that red fort, we visited this Jain temple and we are here at this uh, Gauri Shankar temple belong to Lord Shiva. And just opposite to this temple, there's a church and it's a central Baptist church. And this church is one of the oldest uh, church in North of India. And it was built uh, during the British era. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, this religions and everything and you know, it's just time to take a little bit of a break and shift our, you know, our topic to something different. So, one second. So, you know, I'm going to share, you know, some of the foods that you have to try if you visit India or if you visit Delhi. So there are certain foods that you have to try. And if you do not try these uh, food, means your visit is incomplete. It doesn't, you, you, you will not consider that you have visited Delhi or India. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to show you. And also like you, most of you, you think like it's just, you know, curries and everything, this butter chicken and everything, but this is different. So that's what I'm going to show you. The other, you know, the food items that you have to try. And I'm you know going to share my screen again. Okay, one second. Everyone can see now. Uh, I'm see. Okay. Perfect. Everyone can see this slide or no? I I see uh, the fry fry of sugar sugar thing sugar cane thing. Okay. Perfect. So you know. Uh, so this uh, this food is called jalebi. It's an Indian sweet, and uh, you know it's made from all-purpose flour batter. So the batter is, you know, fermented overnight and then it's deep fried in clarify butter. So clarify butter is key and then it's dipped in sugar syrup. And then it's served. So it's, you know, it's super crispy, juicy. And many Americans, you know, compare this food with their fried donuts. And, but, you know, in South Africa, uh, they have a very similar dessert called Coke Sister. So, which is very similar to this uh, in taste. I know it's a very weird name, Cook Sister, but Cook means cake uh, in their language. So it's like Cake Sister, something like that. But so if you ever come to, you know, Delhi, you have to try this, this is called Jalebi. And, and, the, and in the side video, you can see how they are making this Jalebi as well. So the next is Samosas. Everybody knows Samosa. And, you know, in India, samosa is our all-time snack. You will find samosa everywhere. And, but many people do not know that samosa is not from India. Samosa is, you know, from Middle East. So there's the dish called San Busak. So it came from that. So it came to Delhi in 13th and 14th century. But, you know, when samosas were invented, they used to stuff the samosa with uh, meat. But in Delhi, they started stuffing the samosa with potatoes. 
and that's the one that's famous all over the world. So you know they that's how they roll. They stuff this mashed potatoes filling, and then they close it, and then it's deep fried because you know traditionally samosas are deep fried, but now you can you know air fry and bake if you want to make the healthier version. But if you ask me, deep fried version is the best. And. So the next, uh, you know, food is uh, this alu tikki. So alu means uh, potato, and uh, tikki means patty or cutlet. So if I translate for you, it's a potato cutlet or a potato patty. So it's made from boiled mashed potatoes stuffed with lentils and chickpeas, and it's deep fried and it's very crispy. and then it they serve that with this coriander and mint chutney which is little bit spicy and the sweet chutney is this tamarind sauce so you can see how they are making this so they are making this chaat of this alu tikki and you know these are the popular street food and also side by side like if you have any questions you can just you know um, also send it into the chat um, and i'll try to answer Yeah, it, people are recommending your samosa making experience. Ah, I guess I do. I have you know cooked. I don't know like uncountable numbers of samosas. Now I can you know <laughs> make samosas. Like even if I you just close my eyes, I will be you know make. I can make samosas. <laughs> Maybe in future I'll you know I'll go for that Guinness World Record of making samosas. <laughs> So it's okay. called blindfolding so, samosa making. And okay, so the next is you know this particular dish is only you will find only in Old Delhi. So many of you have heard of this parantha. So you know parantha is a Indian stuffed bread which is traditionally pan fried, but here in Old Delhi they deep fried that, and usually we eat parantha with uh, you know curd and uh, butter, but Here in Old Delhi, they serve it with this uh, potato curry, coriander and mint chutney, and tamarind and banana sauce, and this pumpkin. This one is this pumpkin. This is sweet and little bit spicy, and this is fenugreek and potato, and it's a must try. And you know uh, the shop is right now it's run by their seventh generation. So they started in eighteen seventy two. This joint. Okay, so so the next is uh, this dahi bhalla. So uh, dahi bhalla, if I have to translate, uh, the translation is like these are lentil dumplings, you know, dipped in sweet yogurt. So and they also you know add this coriander and mint chutney and tamarind. So this one is sweet. It's not savory. It's it's sweet. If you do not like, you know, the spicy stuff, so you can, you know, try this one as well. And uh, and also, guys, you can just, you know, put that, uh, put that in the chat. If you have tried any of these, like, uh, how many of you have tried, like, the, you know, the stuff uh, I'm showing, the food items I'm showing. Um, anybody have tried any of these I, food dishes? Yeah, um, JD, there's one question. For yes. for you, uh, it's from Mike. Mike asks, "Do Indians experiment with new types of samosa filling?" Oh yes, yes. And now we have so many varieties of samosas. You won't believe. You know, people are stuffing pastas into samosa. So you can imagine. <laughs> yes, literally, like. Uh, so there are so many different kinds of samosa. One joint is just dedicated to samosas. So they stuff, you know, anything. But uh, like traditionally, but you will find chicken samosa uh, or you know this mutton samosa are common. But like potato samosa is the most common in Delhi and it's all over the world. But now there are so many varieties of samosas. Yes, and I have I have not tried the pasta samosa, but I am I will try that for sure. It looks, you know, I have seen the video of that. It just you know that person is breaking that and this all this. You know, cheesy pasta is coming out. It looks good. So, so we got a few champion kids. 
Eileen and Sue said they have tried all the dishes you have shown and they love all of them. Uh, Sue lives in West Yorkshire, England, and there are a lot of India and Pakistan restaurants around her. So lucky her. Perfect. You know, there are two more dishes I'm going to show you. And, you know, the one is like very typical, like this is, this is something you will find in Delhi. It's difficult to find it outside Delhi. And that's what I'm going to show you. And one second. Okay. So the, the other one is this, you know, this Bhattura Chola. So many people will think it's a puri. It's not a puri. Puri is a puff Indian bread. This is also a puffy Indian bread, but this is different. And it's made from all purpose flour and it's deep fried and it's very puffy. And, you know, they served it with this uh, chole. Chole is the uh, chickpeas, so chickpea curry. And it's a very popular, it's a popular Indian snack. So, you know, these are the dishes you have to try when you are in Delhi. And the last one, if you are a spice lover, you know, if you like spice and if you want to test your spicy level, then you have to try this. So it's called kachori. And it's from Rajasthan. So, you know, the outer layer is made from all-purpose flour and they stuff with this spicy lentil mix and then it's deep fried and then they serve it with this, you know, uh, spicy potato curry and they add this fresh cilantro, juniors of ginger and with a terra root sauce. So if you're a spice lover and if you want to test your spice level, you have to try this kachori. Okay. So we have talked a lot about food also. So if you have any questions, you can just also type it in the chat box. And, yeah. and JD, also yeah, like, have you tried? Questions. Yes, they have, um, question. they have questions. So okay. Questions and uh, uh, requests. Uh, Mark asked um, if, is the separation of main courses and dessert not so clear in Delhi? So is there a clear separation between main course and dessert? for food in Delhi? Main course, like, uh, you know, these, uh, the item I've shown, like, uh, for example, it's aloo tikki, it's a, it's comes under the snack. And um, so the jalebi, yes, yeah, there is a, like, if you go to a restaurant, yes, they will, you know, give you some appetizer, they will describe what it is like that. So that's what Mark is asking, or Mark, if you want to like, uh, tell me like what exactly, And uh, AE uh, asked if there's any chance the, the name of the food you are highlighting can be put in the chat box. Uh, this is something oh, I think sure, sure. which will be really useful to all of us. Yeah, sure. You know, usually like, sorry, you're looking at the presentation I made. Uh, usually I put the names and everything, but somehow I'm not able to, you know, save that presentation. So that's the reason. The names, but I will. What I'm gonna do, I will, you know, uh, send you the, all the photos, the names, and, and also the food joints. I will recommend when you visit Delhi. I would recommend so I will do that. Uh, maybe when you send the mail, so you can send the photos and everything to them. Oh, that would be fantastic! Okay. So now you know, we just move forward, okay? So the, our next talk is uh, the Sikh Gurdwara, uh, Sikh Sahib. And tell me how many of you have heard of this religion called Sikhism? Yes. Me? Yes. Oh, this is good. Most people said yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's good, actually. Mm. It, because, you know, when I host, you know, uh, people on the food tours, Almost, you know, sixty percent of the people they have not heard of uh, this religion called Sikh, Sikhism. I'm also a Sikh, and I think like I think pe many people are from the UK. So there's a big, uh, a big population of Sikhs you know, over there. So that's the reason people know about Sikhism. And also in Malaysia, I think people there is a uh, there are many Sikhs. Uh, there's a uh, Sikh community there as well. I think, am I right? So there's a Tajuddin is here. Yeah, so Saraya from Malaysia said you're absolutely right. Correct. 
So same thing, uh, guys. I will not bore you with this uh, Sikh history. I will just, you know, just tell you the, you know, uh, basic of Sikhism. So you know, Sikhism uh, is the fifth largest uh, religion in the world, and it started with our first master, uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, in of uh, 1469. And uh, we have 11 gurus, 11 masters. So first ten came in human form, then our Tenth master, tenth guru, compiled the teachings of our all previous gurus into the holy scripture called Guru Granth Sahib. So that's our holy book, and we treat our holy book as our living God. And uh, in Sikhism, you know, uh, there are three pillars. There are three pillars of Sikhism. One is Nam Japo, means uh, say you know remember God name, so say God name. second is kirt karo means uh, on an honest living and the third is one chako means share what you have with us so these are the three main pillars of sikhism and now i'll you know show you some of the photos of this gurudwara and guys one more thing uh, i'll in upsi play worship is called gurudwara so the temple it's it's a gurudwara so g u r u d w a r a so so like for example for muslim is mosque for christian is church for sikh it's gurudwara and this is the inside of this temple so you will see these priests are singing religious hymns so religious hymns are those yeah these are the teachings of our guru written in our holy book and that's what they are singing and you know what they are singing is getting translated on these screens in english hindi punjabi so that people who are sitting they can you know understand the meaning of it and it's not only sikhs who come and pray as you can see you know people from you know different religion faith caste they just come and pray and there there is no discrimination of any kind and in the middle so in under this canopy our holy book is placed and we always sit you know facing towards our it's always open and every gurudwara has a community kitchen or the free kitchen we have a concept of langar i'll come to that and uh, before that i'm going to you know ask you a question uh how many people do you think like this gurudwara feeds every day wow so a is 500 to 1000 b is 5000 to 10000 c 15000 to 20000 50000 see the chats maybe you will tell me wow P- people voted different answers like b and c and d as well I don't think anybody voted for A, but you've got answers falling into B for boy, C for cat, and D for dog. It's amazing, incredible. So B, C, and D. Okay, Minji, what do you think? That's the right answer. You have you also voted? I I haven't voted, but we actually went to visit a Sikh temple in London. I was. Really, really impressed because that temple actually we were told anybody can go in and have a free meal. Anybody can walk in to eat and help. It doesn't matter what's your religion. It really, really blew my mind how generous this religion is. I absolutely have no idea. Eventually, how many people this temple can feed? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> and you know the right answer is you know 15000 to 20000 people eat here every day and there is no discrimination of any kind like any caste creed culture sex whatsoever you just come and eat and the rule is uh, you know eat as much as you want but do not waste food you can also take food home as well but do not waste and it just it can also you can see it just not only six to our setting and then it just like people from all you know Everyone, you can see, and we just just sit together, eat together, 
And this is just on the weekends. And if you visit this Gurdwara on weekends, so it's double, it's around 30 to 40,000 people eat every day here. And this is only in this Gurdwara. So there are you know many Gurdwaras all over the world and also in Delhi. So in Delhi, we have 11 historical Gurdwaras. And you know in this Gurdwara, like there is one more Gurdwara in Delhi. There every day, like 40,000 people eat every day. And on the weekends, it's up to 100,000 people. I'm just talking about you know the historical Gurdwara. So, so, but if you are anywhere in the world, if you visit a Gurdwara, you will find food for sure. Maybe like outside India, it's not regular, maybe on the weekends, but definitely you will find food for sure. And, you know, let me tell you, you know, how the concept of this free kitchen, this, you know, uh, this langar started. So let me, you know, tell you about this concept. So it, you know, started with our first master, uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. In... So what happened was one day, his father gave him some money to, you know, start a business. He told him to, you know, start a profitable business. And while on his way, our master, you know, found some hungry Hindu saints. So what he did with that money, he bought them the food, he fed them. And when he returns to his father and he told him, like, you know, I started a very nice business and it's very profitable. So his father was very upset and he was very angry. So only thing our master replied is, uh, I found profit in service. So that's how the concept of free kitchen, this langar started. And since they're just, you know, going stronger and stronger every day. And uh, so if you can see, like, even it doesn't matter, like if you are um, like emperor of India, Akbar, like Guru said, I will meet you only when, when you sit with normal people and eat, and then you come to me. So he did, the emperor also did the same. So he also, you know, had his meal with, with everyone sitting here like this. And uh, also, you know, one more interesting thing about these Gurdwaras is, you know, it's, uh, it's all volunteer base. Like uh, there are people from management as well, but uh, 60 to 70% you will find it's run by volunteers. And also you don't have to register as a volunteer. You just walk in and just start, you know, doing the services, doing the work and everything. Nobody will ask you, you just ask them what you want what they're doing and just like start, you know, and, you know, here I learn how to, you know, make this perfect round bread. When I was a kid, I used to go to the Gurdwaras uh, with my cousin. So we rolled uh, so many, you know, bread perfect on now. So I learned, you know, how to make, uh, you know, the bread in in Gurdwaras. and in the video you can see because you know it's not uh, like when you're gonna feel a still mega kitchen so in this see this big pots so you know the quantity of the lentils anyone can guess in the chat box as you can see uh, you know in the video What's in, in kilograms? 500, 400, 800 kilograms. What do you think? So that's the weight of the lentil, lentils, lentils used in this country, uh, in this kitchen, is it? Oh, two tons. Uh, wow. It's like every batch is around, you know, uh, 500 uh, kilograms or 600 kilograms yes and also the thing is you know they just keep on up upgrading their technology but and they you know they have installed these machines recently earlier they were like big pots like this size but it all was manually but now they have you know installed these you know new machine here as well and And also ask me and because uh, we are just 
and okay so you know this is at the end so this mosque is a fitri mosque and the this was built by the same emperor again uh, for his wife for why or why he built this mosque so you can see you know the partiality of that same and this you know this mosque is just next to the spice market and once again i'm going to you know pose over here so that okay why is not Uh, you know, I was about to like I was you know trying to to the you know up the, of that road, and we you know with the spice mark uh, at that time. But anyways, I'll move. So our last stop is. the spice market so this is the asia's largest spice market and it's called khari bauli and but do you know like why we use spices here in india like and especially in old delhi why we use spices do you have any idea like is it to preserve the food because it's very hot okay Or is it to add flavor yes it is you know to add flavor so you know uh, let me tell you uh, i you know interest interesting story is um, you know the story goes back to the same emperor shah jah you know the one who built this fort and everything so when he built that fort you know he cons he consulted with everyone but not to his personal physician so when he was shifting his capital from agra to delhi he built that fort so he consulted with everyone not to his personal physician so when his personal physician came to know about it he was very upset and he told emperor that you're going to die and emperor was like you know like why is that he said the water of yamuna river is not good and you're going to drink that water you're going to get sick and eventually you will die so he said now my fort is ready i cannot desert and come back there must be a solution so what to do and then his physician suggested like you know you have to eat a lot of spices in your food and to digest the effect of spices you have to eat you know you have to add more clarified butter in it you know this added add more spices and they add you know more clarified butter and if you notice you know the clarified butter especially old delhi if you olive oil but if you visit if you go to you know here in old delhi so they use clarified butter that is key we they are you know they following the same tra traditional own recipes and everything and if you are eating spice back at home so you know this is the asia's largest spice market and if you eat spice back at home and it if it is coming from india so the person must eat from this mark is there are so many exporters who export the spices from here and uh, one second one second yeah okay so now like um, that's you know that's the that's the about the spice market and everything i have some you know uh, some uh, nice drone footage of the that i'll you know to you and also some random photos of this uh, area in old delhi and if you have any questions you can you know just um, uh, ask me about it and and otherwise i'll you know i'll just start the video and you know show you the random photos of the area in old delhi as well so we got a question from lilia and andrea about the the temple they were asking why so many people were in that temple particularly is it because the chef is better at cooking oh, yeah <laughs> you know uh, you will not get the same flavor if you make the same dishes at home uh, because you know it's made with love so you know uh, like because you know uh, you cannot match the mom's taste so that's the same thing 
uh, over there so you cannot match the you know, the flavors you will get in a gurdwara so that's completely different yes so i said that's that friends or it's just because it's just the in the food that is different and you know so vegetarian meal so that uh, everyone can enjoy it just it's vegetarian the food is vegetarian and they just keep on changing the lentils vegetables every day which is also so jd thanks for taking us for this 1 km in delhi it's a short distance for so much for being shown and we were just astonished by the enormous kindness in the temple you showed us Uh, I've got a couple questions for you and uh, people in the group. If you've got questions for JD, feel free to raise your hand to ask as well. Uh, JD, how important is food in in the Indian culture, and how important food is in your life? Oh, you know, it's um, it's a very nice question. It's uh, you know, for me, like you know, I. you know it's not like i started this food tours like i was doing this food tours i you know did my training as a chef and everything and uh, i have a um, my family i have a i'm a third generation restaurant owner and my it's 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 an award winning restaurant and why i am not you know why i do not go to my restaurant because you know i just don't want to you know stick to one place so that's the reason you know i started uh, this food tours because i just I just love meeting new people, so that's the reason I started this food tours and the cooking classes. So I started inviting people to my house and start cooking and sharing uh, the recipe and that. And I know four styles of cooking. Like I learned it from my grandmother, my mother, my father's recipe, and my own style. You know, which I learned in this by doing the training in five stars and everything. So that's you know uh, what I share. Um, and that's how i started i just and i just love you know doing this online cooking classes because because of this i met you know so many amazing people like from all over the world yeah. so. and i also understand your family runs a restaurant in delhi um do how's the situation now is it open is it still closed <laughs> so uh my restaurant is closed for now uh, we might open it uh, next year but uh the situation is getting better in delhi now so those things you know now they are slowly uh, targeting like unlocking so i think by next month uh, everything will be open more but and now it's getting better but they, I, at the same time they are also you know saying uh, there is a danger for third wave and everything like that so let's see but now the government is like prepared but there are there are so many people so it's difficult to you know mm. is there anything we can support support you uh, we as a group people here who enjoyed your generosity who enjoyed your storytelling is there anything we can do to support you uh you know you can um, add the review uh, on google Mm-hmm. or on uh, trip advisor um, so that would be helpful if you can add a review on okay. my google listing or like trip advisor mm. so i'm typing your virtual tour google map the address in the chat box uh, so for people who would love to visit india uh, but can't at the moment who would like to uh, meet jd but can't at the moment please feel free uh to give jd a review uh even one or two lines would be hugely valuable for for people who who whose business is interrupted at the moment um so there are more questions here uh albert from california asked thank you for the talk can you discuss regional cuisine differences especially between the north and the south india Oh yeah, that's you know Indian cuisine is like very vast, big, and mostly like you know uh, people like outside India they just know about only North Indian cuisine, uh, yeah, that stuff. But uh, it's completely different. South Indian cuisine is completely different. In South Indian cuisine, people just know about only dosas. That that's are very popular dosas and idli. But there are so much like there are so many things, 
and in north indian cuisine it, like uh, when in north india so the cuisine is very diverse if you go towards rajasthan that is completely different so the food you know which is like typically popular is the punjabi food you know that uh, this tikka this butter chicken and everything um, it's kind of very popular and also one more thing about butter chicken is what do you think like where butter chicken was invented like where butter chicken was invented so who who so your question is who invented it or or when yeah where and where where it was where? invented oh so people who would like to try the answer uh you can type in the chat box where do you think <laughs> so place it next to your father's restaurant <laughs> no it's no so because you know she has <laughs> in my butter chicken class so <laughs> oh delhi moti maha uh, yes london yes and says london <laughs> yes moti mahal is right so our restaurant is just next to uh, moti mahal and we also happen to have this authentic recipe so butter chicken was invented in delhi yes is it true it's next to your father's restaurant yes <laughs> wow fantastic we, we we are in the same lane but the current owner is not the original owner who invented the butter chicken now they have sold that uh, restaurant property mm. but uh, but the birthplace of butter chicken is still that uh, more questions coming uh, lilian and andrea from singapore asked do international fast food chains have an influence over the food culture in india or is it a marginal phenomenon uh, i don't think so i don't think so it's um, it like even like when indians you know go out they prefer to eat indian food they go to a indian restaurant they try butter try the you know the dal makhani like that but uh, you know but uh, the other food joints are getting you know the fast food chains like pizza it's also popular at the same time but uh, usually like if we go out as a family or something so most of the time people you know do not try the other cuisine it's just mostly the uh, indian food that's what they try they try different indian cuisine that's what say mm uh more and more questions coming mark said fantastic fantastic tour i'm really interested in the religious viewpoints so uh you didn't mention buddhism are there uh, are there buddhist temples in delhi or oh, there are buddhist monastery and temples but you know uh, actually uh, the area i showed it's the old delhi and it's just 1 km and the my idea was like you know when you can see so much in just 1 km so what you know when you see when you when you will you know start exploring india so this is just you know whatever we have seen these temples religious sites food and everything this is just in only 1 km and this is just a very small part of you know delhi so imagine when you you know start exploring india so it's like it's it see it's different so everyone you know you should visit india you plan your visit to india and also when you plan your visit to india it's just not for you know 2 3 days or a week you will hardly scratch anything minimum for you know 3 weeks because first 2 3 days just goes like what's going around and then you will you know start experiencing it you will not travel india you will i would say you will experience india and it's um, it's a beautiful experience and once in in a lifetime you have to experience it and then you will come back for sure and i hear something you know glasgow so you know the chicken tikka masala i think alok is talking about the chicken tikka thing yes so chicken tikka masala is a version of butter chicken so yes this like you know it was invented in glasgow in a restaurant uh, but it's a version of butter chicken actually oh this is great and i hope one day if we do spend we do have the time and opportunity to spend two to three weeks experience india we probably will reach out to you asking for recommendations and ask you uh, invite you to curate an experience for us if that's okay please you are most welcome <laughs> in also like you know uh, i have shared my instagram i'm super active on my instagram post a lot of food photos and videos and you'll see this face a lot on it as well and uh, and you know 
i'll now i'll you know just show you some of the other you know like places when you visit um, in delhi i will show you some of the drone shots as well so if you still have any question you just let me know also when i end the video also So this is the uh, CP. Guys, thank you for you know joining. I really hope that you have uh, enjoyed this you know uh, session. And I'm just gonna you know quickly run these random you know see when when you visit uh, Delhi and you will see some of these you know people and everything. Like so, I'm gonna just run this random photos of this area, old Delhi. So now they have uh, like completely changed uh, this. So now it's uh, pedestrian friendly, but you will still see this. You know the modern art of Indian wiring. You will see that for sure. And see, you know Indian monkeys are super monkeys. So you see that this monkey is sitting, just like on the you know running like electric wires. So they are super monkeys, like literally. So. I don't know how how they do that, but it just like they just like jump from one wire to another wire, and it's uh, it, it's very common. And they still have the cycle rickshaws. And you know, in spice market, the um, you know the variety you will find is endless. You know, you will hear about the spices you have never heard of. So and also you can bargain here and you will get a good you know price because you will find the spices which are not available easily in your country and it's a big market for uh, you know uh, nuts as well. So that's the top of the uh, you know spice market and many you know it's popular with this Bollywood uh, because many movies have been shot here as well. And you know this this mansion. This was a haveli actually, which was converted into a, a spice market. And uh, right now, you know, th there are forty eight families who live in this 
you know this haveli and this was built in during the british era so this haveli this mansion was belonged to indian rich family and then a businessman bought this house and converted it into a spice market it just not only spice market it's just a part of the spice market but from this side you will get a very nice view of you know this old delhi and also guys what do you think like what's the population of of uh, delhi how many people live in delhi that's the last question and then we're just going to end i know it's over almost so just last what do you think how many people like do not google it just what do you think what's the population delhi only delhi not india just delhi Ten, twenty million, twenty million. Uh, oh, a lot of twenty million coming up. Five million. Yes. So who say twenty million? That's uh, with that closer, which is it's uh, twenty two. But when you uh, also add uh, NCR's areas, adjoining areas, then it's twenty nine million. Wow, it's a huge city. And, yes, and the footfall, you know, the area which is west side. What do you think? What's the footfall here in Old Delhi every day? What do you think? How many people visit this area every day? Not during the COVID, before COVID. So the one kilometer road you showed us. Yes. How many people yes. visit that area every day? Absolutely, have no idea. Uh, shall we try? Uh, oh, that's very precise. Lillian said five, five, five. Five hundred fifty-five thousand. A hundred thousand. You know, hundred thousand. Okay. A million. Oh, I, I have no idea. It's really hard to to estimate. Really, seven million. Two hundred fifty thousand. One million. <laughs> Gary said twenty two point twenty two k, three million, or all, all all kinds of number comes up. Uh, all kinds of numbers come up. So uh, JD, we rely on you now to reveal the true answer. I know it's around you know five thousand to a million every day. The footfall they have this in this area, in it's so you know all the shops. Uh, And everything, it's like they are super busy. And now, you know, because they have redeveloped this whole area, so now it's more pedestrian friendly. So there are no uh, cars are allowed. So it's just like uh, rickshaws are allowed, or in just the pedestrian like 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 that. That's it. So I'm just you know looking forward to when you know because I used to do my tours when they were just you know building this. So we used to you know jump. I make my guests jump like they literally like they literally jump from one step to another. And like that, so that was our experience also. But now it's more convenient, I think. But still very crowded. Still very crowded. So, Jerry, does that one million number include monkeys or humans only? Humans only. You will find cows. You will find monkeys. Monkey rule this area. Like in spice market, you know they rule that. Like you might have seen that in video. So what that monkey was? Have you seen that video when I showed that spice market video? Did you see that? What monkey was doing over there? So they were, you know, this uh, because the people who live, the laborers who live in that, you know, area. So the people who work, they live in that area, and they, uh, you know, also like they would um, um, wash their clothes, and you know, they were uh, putting. No, he was not. That was not a. That was not a shirt. That was an underwear. So that <laughs> monkey was trying the underwear, <laughs> and somehow it doesn't fit. So that's why he throw that un underwear back. So <laughs> let me check if I can, you know, play that again. Uh, one second, let me check. I'm going to show you one second. If it is okay with everyone, so one second, I'm going to play it back. Of course, we all want to see how monkeys try underwear. Absolutely, absolutely. One second. Oh, why I'm not able to share it? One second, guys. Just a second. I'm gonna, you know, share it again. And I think this, this one. Okay. Okay. 
One second, I'm going back, going back, sorry. Sorry guys, it's taking a little bit of time. Oh. Sorry, I'm now, uh, yes. In this video, you will see that, one second. Yes, I'll show you when, you know, when it will come, so one second. And you will also find so many varieties of, you know, red chilies. So they usually come from Rajasthan. So this was the mention, you know, this was the Haveli I was talking about. And you see that monkey over here, chilling. Over here. And even one more thing, that's a bonus tip. You know, never, yes, here, you will see this. That's the underwear, see? He's... <laughs> Monkey is trying to put that underwear. <laughs> Sorry for my camera was not stable, but see this. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> see? <laughs> not my size. Bye bye. Oh, too bad. Too bad. <laughs> and now he's chilling. Like, <laughs> Nobody cares. In, in bonus tip I was talking about, never, you know, make an eye contact with a monkey. So they feel scared and they will get defensive and they will So never make an eye contact. So take their photos from a little bit, uh, lovely uh, meeting you and sorry for, you know, like um, for the extra time, sorry. We really enjoyed it. And uh, especially the bonus part of monkeys trying underwear, something very unique lifestyle wise. Uh, thank you so much, JD. Uh, this is a wonderful one kilometer to show the food and the culture and diversity of Delhi, uh, which will attract us to visit Indian again. Again, thank you so much. It's fantastic. Uh, we, I would like now to invite two, two gentlemen in our group. I'm gonna spotlight Gary and Kim to talk about what we will do next week. So I'm gonna spotlight Kim and Gary. Uh, can you unmute yourself and uh, uh, let us know what's happening next week for another wonderful cultural storytelling session. Tell us first where you are. Okay, located in uh, Margaret River, Western Australia, mm -hmm. which is uh, down in the premier wine growing area and uh, premier surfing area. And uh, we've got uh, state and national forests. We've got uh, walking through the forest, trekking. We've got uh, Cape to Cape trekking. Uh, so there's a lot of activities here. And uh, we're out in the bush. And uh, next week, I'll be introducing you to the critters, the kangaroos and uh, the various other creatures. <laughs> Great. And you are uh, connected to the group through Gary. Gary, are you able to yes. speak a little? Yes. yes. Um... Uh, I uh, started into amateur radio at the age of 12 and fairly early on discovered the beautiful cultural aspects of the many uh, contacts that I had worldwide. Kim is such a good example because Kim is located about as far from me. I'm in Florida, eastern Florida, and Kim is western Australia, and that's about as far as I can go in any direction. So uh, that is uh, my great love of discovering how it is with Kim, the, the interesting uh, critters that he has and, uh, and all of that. We'll have a fun time uh, exploring what, uh, what the contacts of amateur, radios, amateur radio operators uh, uh, have and, and discover with each other worldwide. Yes, so uh, before we had internet and mobile cell phone network, 
uh, people actually managed, they did manage to talk to each other around the world through radio network. Uh, I believe, Gary, you were 12 when you discovered uh, amateur radio. Uh, I don't know when, Kim, you started to uh, do amateur radio, Radio Ham, but next Sunday Cultural Storytelling is very much about how people can travel through the world via airwaves, uh, not only about the technical side, equipment side of radio hand, amateur radio, radio, but also about how we discover each other's culture and lifestyle through uh, airwaves. So uh, thank you very much uh, for coming for today's Cultural Storytelling. We will see you next week. Bye.